What's up everyone, my name is Alpha and today we're back with another Pokemon challenge video. Today we're on Pokemon Infinite Fusion and today's challenge will be something I've been working on for a little bit now. Can I beat Pokemon Infinite Fusion using only Ditto Fusions? We're gonna have to go through a lot of different methods to get Ditto because Ditto is actually available to us in the later parts of the game in Cinnabar Island and also in the Jolo region more. Uh, so it's gonna be interesting how we can figure out to get a bunch of Dittos and fuse them with a bunch of Pokemon uh, for our team. So it's gonna be interesting as well. We're gonna have some added rules. Of course, we're gonna play on modern mode, which is I think the hardest difficulty. There is a hard mode that we're gonna play on as well, which doesn't let us uh, switch out our Pokemon and the, and the levels are a lot higher, so it's more difficult for sure. And included with that, I am going to add a death rule. Uh, if my Pokemon ever dies during a gym fight specifically, uh, they're going to be unfused and we're going to have to re-up a new Pokemon. So it's a, that's why there's a death counter on screen. Uh, now my first Pokemon, since I could choose anything, I decided to choose the best Pokemon I could think of, an Arceus. So um, my starter Pokemon will be an Arceus and Ditto. Now you might think that's a little broken to start off with, but Ditto has probably one of the lowest stat totals in the game. So he's not really that good at all. So I think it balances out the greatest Pokemon ever made, Arceus to Ditto. So I think I think that's a fair trade-off. Uh, from there, that's gonna be our starter Pokemon. That's why if you still see an Arceus like clone mode, it's kind of cool. But besides that, we're gonna add an additional role. Each of my Pokemon will be nicknamed after you guys in the comments. So thank you so much for leaving a nickname in my previous challenge video. If you guys won't be nicknamed after a future Pokemon, just drop in the comments and hopefully I'll pick yours. And while it's down here, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. Anyways, let's get into the challenge video itself. Now, to be an off, obviously, we're going to use our, I think, Ditsius, a <laughs> Ditto Arceus. And it's a pretty okay Pokemon. The only move we have is Punishment, or we can actually transform. So, that's the only option of doing damage as the start of the game. And, unfortunately, when we get to level 10, it learns a new move, but it's Gravity. So, we're stuck with the same move. So, eventually, we're going to go out into the forest, and we have to get through this trainer. The only way to get through this trainer is actually transforming into this Ramish, which is Ralts and Shroomish. And then I'm allowed to finally beat this trainer and move on and progress through the game. Uh, from there, we can move on into the first gym in the game. We're going to face off against Brock. Brock is going to be the rock type. Well, he's not rock. He's just the first gym leader. He's going to start the battle off against us using a Shroom Yard. Which I go for a punishment and immediately get hit with an effect spore. Which I'm like, okay, I should wake up. I woke up in like two turns, which is fine. And I went for a punishment again to knock out the shroom yard. Unfortunately, it hits me with effect spore again. So it's very annoying. So I have to stay asleep against the Steed Jr. And eventually, I'm able to wake up. I'm able to get some mud slaps off against the Steed Jr. I go down to 1 HP, but luckily enough... All the mud slaps to lower the accuracy of Steed Jr. actually comes in clutch as I'm able to beat down Steed Jr survive and i don't have to reset the game so we're able to beat down brock that gives us access into the wonder trade mechanic of the game and that is how we're gonna have to find dittos for a little bit so we're gonna have to look for ditto fusions through the wonder trade and our first well it takes like an hour for our first form so first problem we're gonna find is the atto which is aaron and to and <laughs> i said aaron and toe Era and Ditto, so that's gonna be interesting as uh, we're also gonna get ourselves the XP share to uh, level up our Atto. And from there, we can move on past the Nugget Bridge and also past Route 22, where we're able to go into a uh, Bill's house, get the SS ticket, and then move on into the next gym. Then, the next gym in the game we're gonna face off against is gonna be Misty. Misty's the water type gym leader. I keep saying that, but she's not. We're gonna start the battle off against Misty using our Atto. Now, Lucky enough, we're able to land our first move, and I completely forgot Atto is actually a trade Pokemon. So, we're able to beat down the Glairogue, but unfortunately when the Man Rush comes out, uh, it stops listening to me, kinda. I just, I don't know what's going on. I could've knocked out the Man Rush, but then it surprised me with a Bubble Beam, because, uh, well, I wasn't really paying attention. So, unfortunately, we lose our Atto, and I go out into my Ditsius. So, from there, I'm able to knock out the Man Rush, but just barely. It heals up, it's kind of annoying, but eventually I'm able to knock out the Man Rush. We are to the second gym batch in the game, which is nice. But unfortunately, we lose our first Pokemon already. So that means we have to go back into the Wonder Tree and just keep trading and trading. We go through 280 tickets in total for our next Pokemon. We get ourselves a Dit Reel, which will evolve into... Well, I think it's still a Dit Reel. It's a Zoom Reel and Ditto, uh, which is cool. And then we continue on for another 200 tickets. And I'm like, this is not working. I don't know what's going on. I think if there was a set amount, like 100 tickets, I would have been fine and then kept wonder trading. So I was like, you know what? This is not working out. I need to get some food as well. So I decided to pull up my editor, pull out my game editor, and I am able to edit in my Pokemon. So from you can see, all my Pokemon are now Dittos. 
and I'm able to just start fusing them together. They still have the abilities that they were uh, uh, modified into, which is fine. I'm not going to use their abilities. I'm going to use the other Pokemon I fuse with them. But uh, I have a problem. I caught this uh, Staryu in the wild, and it was not catching. As you can see, uh, <laughs> so I had to run away after catching the Staryu and reset my game. But from there, we can move out. I fixed the game. We're going to face off against Lieutenant Surge next. Lieutenant Surge is going to be the third gym leader in the game. We're going to start the battle off against him using my Dip Reel. Dip Reel is able to go for two Bubble Beams, which I should have Water Pose, to knock out the Nose Key. And then his next bone will be a Hound Lead, which I'm able to go for a Bounce and knock out in one shot because I have huge power. From there, he's going to switch out into his Fletching Chop, which I just got to land one Bounce to knock him out. Since he's part fighting type, I'm going to one shot him and knock him out. We're able to easily beat down Lieutenant Surge and we can move on into the next portion of the game. So, since we have a full team of Dittos now, we can fuse into what Pokemon we want. Uh, we're going to start out with a Magikarp. Now, I'm going to use the basic Pokemons, Magikarp, Beldums, obviously. I caught both of these Pokemon. And uh, the reason why I use these basic Pokemon or these very strong Pokemon I commonly use is that Ditto has very bad stats. So, in a difficult challenge like this, we can't actually go for like crazy cool looking fusions. We have to go for really good Pokemon. We also prioritize good looking fusions. Like, Gyarados is a funny one. It's cool. Arceus is a really cool one. I thought Metagross is kind of funny. From there, we also go down to the Celadon uh, Sewer System and we caught ourselves a Sandile, which has Moxie. Unfortunately, I fused that with my Ditto later on, and unfortunately, it gets rid of Moxie. I'm not too sure how that works. I specifically caught it for Moxie, but whatever. From there, we're going to face off against Giovanni in the Sewer System, which I'm not sure why he's down here, but uh, we beat him down pretty easily. Now, from there, we're going to face off against Erica, which is going to be the fourth gym leader in the game. We're going to start the battle off against her using Medizius. Ditsia is able to go for a rock to get knock out the type tier really easily. Now I'm a little over level, uh, not because of choice, because uh, I think this is like a required amount. As you see, my Ditsia takes a lot of damage really bad. If I was the same level as the Galvangekong, I would have lost. So I'm able to knock out the Galvangekong just because I'm a little over level and I'm able to do extreme speed and knock him out. Her next bone will be a Butter Geist. I go out to my Ditrodos, which. You know, it's kind of funny, but I'm unfortunately not able to knock out the Butter Guys because it's put me to sleep, and then Magical Leaf almost knocks me out. So I go out to my Crocodile, uh, which unfortunately gets knocked out by the Butter Guys on his first fight with me, so that's not good. I knock out the Butter Guys using my Dizius, but uh, unfortunately, that's two deaths already, so things are not looking too great for us. We're able to get ourselves the fourth gym badge in the game, also the Poke Flute, catch ourselves a Snorlax at least, and infuse that with our. <laughs> it looks so cute. I love the Snorto, uh, the Snorlax and Ditto combination, which is very nice. From there, we're going to also catch us a Volcarona. You know how it is. Volcarona is the most broken Pokemon in Infinite Fusion, I think. And from there, we're gonna also going to fuse that together. Together, there's a Ditriono. I mean, it's an interesting name, Ditriono. This can be hard to say. But from there, we're going to face off against Koga next. Koga is going to be the fifth gym leader in the game. We're going to start the battle off against him using my Snorto. Snorto is able to body him into the Reunit Rourke. Uh, which I can switch out into something else because I'm getting low on HP. I go out to my Ditsius after he's fallen asleep. And then I can double into my Ditrodos, uh, which is able to go for a Dragon Dance and then knock out the Reunion Rourke. From there, I'm able to Dragon Dance in front of Wheat Flame. Cannot do that too many times because it's knocking me down to low HP. So I can Octo and knock out the Wheat Flame. From there, I'm actually able to one-shot the Honchvor. And then her final Pokemon will be an Umtera, which is Ground-type. Umtera go down to an Octo and we're able to beat down Koga, which is very nice. From there, we move out into the self code where we easily beat a rival. And we can also easily beat Giovanni and... I mean, this is a double battle fight against Giovanni, so we're able to easily beat him with our rival. From there, we also get an insurance policy and get ourselves a total out just in case something dies. From there, we can move on and face off against Sabrina, which is going to be the 6th team leader in the game. We're going to start the battle off against Sabrina using my Dipridos. Dipridos is able to go for Dragonets and then Aquato to knock out the Sylvie Ocean, taking a Moonblast though, which is kind of unfortunate, but... Akuto will easily knock out the Maricu with a crit. From there, she can switch out to her Clefix, which I go out to my Snorto. Uh, I can't do anything here, so I decide to go for a Yawn, and then I go out to my Dibrona, which is able to go for Fiery Dances against the Clefix, which easily two-shots it. And then from there, we already two-shot into the Drift Roll, which unfortunately, we almost get killed with the Hydro Pump, but lucky enough, we have enough damage to knock out the Drift Roll before that happens. So from there, we beat down Sabrina and move out into Blaine's Gym in Cinnabar Island, which we're able to get every single question right, which isn't a big, like, a uh, <laughs> huge deal, but uh, I'm just, I got used to it now. At this point, we can face off against Blaine. Blaine's going to be an easy gym fight. We're going to start the battle off against him using my Dipperdose. Dipperdose is able to go for an Octo and almost knock out the Clinkferig, which from there is going to miss a Zen Headbutt, which is very nice for us as we're able to go for a Crunch and knock him out. 
From there, he's gonna switch out into his Alistar, which I'm very lucky he didn't go for a grass move as I go for an Ice Fang thinking it would kill. Did not kill, but second one will kill it as his next bone will be a Toga Nucleus, which I switched out immediately. Was not dealing with that. I go out into my Dibriona, which doesn't do a lot of damage. So I gotta go into the assurance policy of my Ditsius. Ditsius is able to go for extreme speed against him and two shot the Toga Nucleus, and his final bone will be a Xano which two extreme speed would knock him out, which were easily able to knock out Blaine, and then move on and face off against the Zap Malkuno, which against the Zap Malkuno, things are pretty easy. I mean, we just have to sacrifice most of our mons here and there, but eventually we're able to beat down the Zap Malkuno, and we can catch the Moltres. I was thinking about it, but we already have a Volcarona on the team. Uh, so from there, we're going to face off against Giovanni in Viridian City. Viridian City's gym fight isn't too difficult. As you can see, we're doing actually pretty good work against it. Now, the point I'm not commentating is that uh, my OBS or my recording software actually just stopped working in the middle of this. Lucky enough, I saved before every gym just in case things like this. So the game just froze and I had to restart the battle. So lucky enough, it didn't delete the four and a half hour recording I was doing with this game. Maybe thinking back, maybe I should just section off like an hour or two, but it was very annoying. Lucky enough, I could start the battle off against Giovanni using my Ditsius. This is able to knock out the Zotion pretty easily. And then from there, he's going to switch out to his Kuckin, which allows me, this is what I did originally, I switch out into my Dipridos, uh, which is able to get a Dragonite against the Kuckin, and then Aquasil to knock out the Kuckin, the Pori Lurk, and then from there, the Kekon goes down, and his final Pokemon will be a Smeargar, which I have to bait out all the Destiny Bonds, and eventually, I'm able to Toxic him down, and eventually knock out the Smeargar, and get ourselves the 8th Gym Batch in the game. That means Permadeath is off now, which is very nice. From there, we can move on into Victory Road, which we're able to clear through easily, uh, you no, know, I we actually black out once or twice here, but I don't want to talk about it. But from there, we can get all our items we need in the Pokemon League and also face off against the first Elite Four member. We're gonna face off against Lorelei first. Lorelei actually bodies us numerous times. There's two different times. I'm not gonna show the other time because there's a Garakew that got Moxie Boost and just destroyed me, so I didn't want to show that. But facing off against Lorelei, we're gonna start the battle off against her. Use my Dipridos against her Palilion. Which I'm able to get a bunch of Dragonets off against him, and then I'm able to eventually knock him out, even though I'm low HP. From there, she can switch out into her Swamp Ray, which I'm able to Aqua Terra and knock out. Her next bone will be a King Drill, which I get a nice crunch on and killed it in one shot. Her next bone will be a Malatina. Unfortunately, this thing would knock me out with an Aura Sphere, as I able to do some decent damage with a crunch. From there, I'm switch out into my Dipraona, which is able to get some Bug Buzz off against him, eventually knock him out with. Also, some Quiver Dance boost. From there, you can switch out to your Garaku, which unfortunately does a lot of damage to me. And I'm very scared of a sweep here. So I switched out into my Ditsius, and Ditsius is able to go for a Toxic. Lucky enough, I'm able to get a Toxic off, get him down to low HP, and she doesn't heal as I'm able to get a Bullet Punch and knock out the Garaku. From there, her final Pokemon will be a Spooky Muku, uh, which is able to go for a counter against me. So I decided just to Toxic stall it. I don't want to waste any PP, so I switch in between my Pokemon. Eventually knock out Lorelei and that's what hit we had to resort to. Even though we have a high level advantage, our Pokemon are still not the greatest Pokemon in terms of stats besides our Ditsius. Uh, from there we're going to face off against Bruno next. Bruno is going to start the battle off against us using a Tyranna Flame. Which I'm going to start the battle off against him using... I, I haven't... I actually never used this Pokemon. I just realized I haven't used my Diggros in a long time. I don't think I've shown them in a battle. So we're able to knock out the Tyranna Flame with my Diggros. From there, he's going to switch out into his Octostar, uh, which I'm able to go for in Meter Mash, get my attack stat boosted up, and then a Hammer Arm will knock him out, which is very nice. From there, he's going to switch out into his Armatox, which I get a Hammer Arm off against and one-shot him. So, you know what? Things are looking pretty good for us as we keep going for Hammer Arms against the Maririre, uh, which unfortunately wouldn't knock me off, which one, which unfortunately wouldn't knock me down. I go out to my Dip Roll, which is able to go for an Aquatil and knock out the Maririre. From there, he's going to switch out into his Probodon, which I get an Aquatil off. And then he's going to Fire Blast and then just burn me, which is like, what, 10%? What is the, odd, what is the odds of that? Uh, I guess 10%. But from there, I'm going to switch out to my Ditsius, which is able to knock him out with two Earthquakes. From there, I'm going to go for a Toxic off against the Cray Ray. And from there, we could just Toxic Stall off against the Cray Ray and end the battle. So, so far, two battles have ended with Toxic Stalling. Which isn't the best viewing experience, but you know what? We have to do what we need to do as we're to beat down the Cray Ray and beat down Bruno. Now from there, we're going to move on and face off against Agatha next. Agatha is going to be the third Elite Four member of the game. We're going to start the battle off against her using my Dip Rona. Dip Rona is able to go for a few Quiver Dance. Unfortunately, it gets Toxic Spikes set up against him. Uh, which we're able to get Fiery Dance off and knock out the Clef Raid. 
From there, she can switch out into her Kraros, which we're able to go for a Heat Wave and knock out in one shot. Her next bone will be an Umzing, which we're able to two shot it, but it poisons me. Of course, it poisons me with a Sludge Bomb. Uh, maybe to just not knock him out as it knocks me out. Um, from there, I'm gonna switch out into my Ditro, which obviously gets knocked down as well because it's part fairy type, so that was another poor choice in Pokemon. From there, I'm gonna switch out into my Ditrodos. And lucky enough, Ditrodos is able to get two Dragon Dance off against the Umzing, knock out the Umzing for us. From there, we're able to also knock out Dust Plume in one shot. Her next bone will be a Shander Rock, which we're able to Aquatera in one shot as well. And her next bone will be a Mo, which we're able to Ice Fang and almost knocks out. Goes down to low HP, but I can go out into my Ditsius, which has Rock Tomb, still has Rock Tomb. We're able to knock him out in one shot, as we're able to beat down Agatha, which is very nice. From there, we're going to face off against Drake next. From there, we're going to face off against Lance next. Lance is going to be the Dragon type Elite Four member, kind of. He's more like a Flying type Elite Four member. He's going to start the battle off against us using a Toga Flame, which I'm going to go for my Dipperdose, which obviously at this point, Dipperdose might be the most broken Pokemon on my team. We're going to go for a Dragon Dance and then Ice Fang to knock out the Toga Flame. Ooh, I don't knock him out as he almost knocks me out with an Aura Sphere. But I'm able to go for Dragonus once again. Ice Fang to knock out the Toga Flame. His next one will be a Septidactyl, which I've never seen this thing ever use anything. So we're able to Ice Fang, knock him out. His next one will be a Dark Knight, which goes down in one shot. Oh no, he doesn't go down, but he's going to go down to a Life Orb as he knocks me out. So you know what? It works out. From there, he's going to switch out to his Dubat, which I actually go into my Dibrona, uh, not my Digros. I go out to my Dibrona to Fire Dance against him to shot him. Which I guess some Corvid Dance is up against because it also has Destiny Bond. Very annoying Pokemon, but we're able to knock out the Dubat. And, for, and from there, he's going to switch out to his Shandamori. We're able to go for a Heat Wave and knock him out pretty easily. And his final Pokemon will be an Agements, which we're able to go for a Heat Wave and knock out. And from there, we're able to beat down Lance pretty easily. From there, we're going to face off against the champion of the game. We're going to face off against Blue. Blue's going to be the champion of the game. He's going to start the battle off against us using a Ninsharp. Which I start the battle off against him using my Snorto. Now Snorto is able to go for a Fire Blast, which I, I don't know. I don't know why he's doing his Fire Blast, but we're able to go for a Fire Blast as he's going to heal up on his Focus Sash. We're able to go for a Fire Blast again. He does not go down for some reason, but he gets burned. So you know what? Bites him back uh, because the Probodon burned me. We're able to knock out the Ninsharp. From there, he's going to switch up to his Tortinion, which uh, I just sacked my Snorto. It happens. I go out to my Ditsias next. Uh, which is able to go for a Toxic and a Rock Team to two-shot into the Tortinion, which is very nice. From there, he's going to switch out to his Array, which looks very, <laughs> it looks way cooler than my Ditsius, which unfortunately, I'm going to go for a Recover. Lucky enough, I live a Retaliate from it, so we're able to just regain my HP. I can't really do this because I'm running out of Recovers, but I'm able to Toxic into him, and then unfortunately, we're able to get him down to low HP, but he's going to have Extreme Speed, which is going to knock out my Ditsius. So my Ditsius actually goes down, which is surprising. But from there, I can go out into my... <laughs> Unfortunately, I forgot this thing had Thunderbolt. And I'm a Water type, so I go out to my Ditrodos. Which, unfortunately, I go for a Dragon Dance, hoping to sweep. He goes for a Thunderbolt and knocks me out. So I'm like, oh, well, that was bad. So from there, I'm like, oh, I might have just lost. I go out into my Ditgross. Ditgross is able to go for a Zen Headbutt against the Haxmans. Unfortunately, it knocks me out with an Outrage. So I go out to my Ditro, and Ditro, because it's a Fairy type, negates Outrage, goes for a Play Rough, and knocks out the Haxmans, which I'm like, okay, this might be doable. But I'm theory, he's going to switch out to his Chandervile, which I'm able to go for an Aqua Tail against him, and I'm able to survive any hits. Fire Blast into me, unfortunately, I'm able to live it, luckily, but he doesn't go down to an Aqua Tail, and I survive a second one somehow. Low rolls for me. I miss my Aqua Tail, but the Flame Ore will knock him out, which is very nice. I'm not too sure why he's a Flame Ore, but you know what? It works out. So from there, he's going to switch out to his Ryurion as his final Pokemon. He's going to knock out my Dibril, but my final Pokemon will be the Dibrilona, which obviously has Quiver Dance and also Bug Buzz. I survive a Dark Post pretty easily, and from there, I'm able to Bug Buzz into him twice to knock out the Ryurion, and we're able to beat down the champion of the game. We're able to beat down Blue. And yeah, we become champions of Infinite Fusion. And we didn't have to go set up sweeping against the rival champion fight. We swept oh, against everything else. Because uh, again, Gyarados might be the most... Gyarados, I take it back. Gyarados is the most broken Pokemon. Because you get him so early. And um, yeah, he's just easily the best fusion in the game. Just fuse him with anything. And he just carries. I had some broken Pokemon. I'm, I just had an Arceus, a Volcarona, Gyarados, Metagross just for fun. I didn't even use Metagross most of the time. But I still had some like, 
fun Pokemon. I had a Divril, which we got from the Wonder Trade. We had a Snorto, which, I mean, came in handy a lot of times. You'd be surprised. But that would be the end of the video. I want to say thank you so much for watching all the way soon. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you guys can, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. Anyways, my name's been Alpha. Hope you guys all had a great day, and I'm out. Peace.